Greetings, this is Marvin Henriquez. We're here with uh, the author of various romance novels, Nicola Italia, to speak about or talk about her latest book, her, The uh, Love in the Valley of the Kings, which I happen to have read and I thoroughly enjoy. How are you today, Nicola? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. And uh, we're going to jump right in. Well, first with a okay. question. Okay. What does it take? And this is some something that one of the readers was asking. Okay. What does it take to be uh, a character in one of your books? If you, if somebody wants to be per, per, portrayed in your books as either, either the villain or, or the hero, what would it take? I, I was about to say, did they want to be a villain or a, a good uh, the heroine or the hero? Um, you know, it's um, it's funny, and I'm I'm sure other writers are like this. Um, I never set out to put anybody in my novels. Um, as I start to think about my next novel, I think about the setting, most importantly, the time, you know, where it's going to be 18th century, 19th century. And then I start making the characters come alive. I, I create them, you know, physically, what they're going to look like, their names. And then it just comes about that sometimes certain people in my personal life do become the characters in the book. And I'm thinking of the grandmother in The Sheik's Son, her name was Eugenie, and she's kind of like um, very traditional, but she's got some, you know, some funniness to her. And I, I did put my own grandmother into that. So it's never like I conscious, consciously do it, but it does come out. I think that's just kind of normal because the people in your life are gonna, are gonna influence, you know, the, the, right. the characters. So no, now, you can't drive me to put you into my, my novels. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe not me personally, actually. But, uh, now, love in the Valley of the Kings. Uh, for mm -hmm. what I understand, it, it, it's a book that takes place in London or or England and mm -hmm. Egypt. Yes. Um, and I noticed in this particular book a, an element that I did not see in, in the other books, which is seems to be the somewhat of a murder mystery romance. Mm -hmm. How true is that? Yeah, it, it is kind of a thriller. When I was first um, kind of, you know, conceptualizing the book, um, I I did want the woman, the, the main character, Emma, to be an archaeologist and have had studied and have a degree, which for 1920s, it wasn't rare, but it also wasn't the norm like it is now. And her father, I made her father um, a renowned archaeologist, and I kind of fashioned him over... Um, Howard Carter, who discovered King Tut, and so when um, when they leave um, the Haywards, that's the family. When they leave and go to Egypt, they kind of um, hook up with another family that's there, who's also the father is an archaeologist, and then there's the half Egypt, half British um, archaeologist, and that's Winston, and that's who Emma kind of falls in love with. And no, I never set out to make it a thriller, but I'm. I've always been a big fan of Egypt and Egyptology, and I'm a huge Agatha Christie fan, so it just kind of came together. Um, but it was fun to write, so I really enjoyed writing that. Um, but yeah, it was definitely not planned on, on a thriller, being a thriller. And I was impressed, personally, and it made sense to me afterwards that uh, this was the killer, and you explained it why, which is, uh, I really enjoy that about the book, that you explained. And it made sense, the explanations. It wasn't forced, in my opinion, for somebody who is not known for writing uh, a books that are murder mysteries or, or thriller. More than anything, I found it to be a murder mystery than a mm -hmm. thriller. There was some uh, elements of thrill in it, but mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was mostly a historical romance mm -hmm. with a um, twist. Yes. I well. yes. thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. Uh, did you have a lot of fun writing that one? Yes, it was it was a lot of fun. Like I said, um, it kind of combined a lot of things that I really enjoy, which is you know writing historical romance, Egypt, the thriller aspect, and um, I definitely think I would like to revisit that. You know, but I, I um, you know, I never say never. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to write. Uh, uh, there, there is more to the book for, for what I read. Mm -hmm. and what you're telling us right now um I mean, there's, there's, well i mean there's there's a lot of um you know like i said there's the two main families the brookses who have um a mother a father and a daughter um a daughter who's in her 20s and then emma is in her 20s and she has a younger sister 
and you know again they're just kind of all combining converging on the uh, the compound in the valley of the kings and that's where they're looking for this um what what rupert has done he has been um excavating in egypt for over 20 years and in other places and he is convinced that there is an intact tomb um intact meaning that by the 1920s um most of the tombs that were discovered and had been discovered were tombs that were completely ravaged meaning they had been discovered already or the grave robbers had gotten there before them tomb robbing was a big thing um between like the 1880s and the you know that time period so rupert is convinced that there is an intact tomb and so he has a um a lord of the realm finance his final season there and again it it does mirror a, a lot of what howard carter did because howard carter was the same way he uh he was convinced that there was an intact tomb everybody thought he was crazy and of course now he's remembered as one of the the great archaeologists of you know of the field um but yeah it's, and it's fun and so when they converge in the compound in the valley, you know, they're all and you know, she's this some, you know, archaeologist himself. And um, you know, and things start happening and then Kitty, the younger daughter of the Brookses, falls in love with um one of the other um one of the other Egypt archaeologists. So it's it's a lot of fun. It is it's a lot of fun. And um I think people who enjoy Egypt, who enjoy historical romances will will enjoy this this novel. I hope they will. No, I agree. I agree. And it's starting to develop uh now we're going into more of a personal um, part of uh, this informal interview mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you're starting to develop a bit, a bit of a following. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're basically new to the to the, to the author zine, uh, zine uh, writing zine. Um, how's that, that experience? How long have you been writing? It, you know, now speaking of uh, of you personally, how how long have you been writing? Uh, what led you into writing? Now you 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 have five books on mm -hmm. Amazon and. Yes. You, you're once coming out, I understand, next month? Mid-September, yes. And then you have one on the way right now that you're working on. So you, you stay pretty busy. Yes. Which is very uncommon for very new independent writers, I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I've been, um, I've been writing, well, I, I published The Sheik and the Slave February 2014. And um, what happened is that The Sheik and the Slave was originally chapters on another website and i had a dear friend tell me you know you should really um you should really turn this into a book and i i kept saying no no i'm not going to and um the job i was working at, at the time was really unfulfilling and so i thought hey you know i'm going to and so that was the, the first step and it did really well i was really surprised um i'm not sure if it was the following or the fact that it's a little sexy <laughs> but um it did really well and then i just you know went from there so i do um i do keep abreast of you know the indie writer scene and they all seem to say the same thing keep writing so that's what i've done and you know i i really i i enjoy the historical aspect when i was a when i was a reader i always read historical romances so now that i'm a writer I, I just, you know, I look at a, a, a place in time or a, a country and I'm like, oh, that's where I want to be at. And so, you know, it's just kind of, it just comes to me. And, um, but I, I've really enjoyed it. And yeah, you know, the fans are always great. I have, you know, my, my website and um, a monthly newsletter and Facebook and Twitter. So, you know, I love hearing from them and it's just, it's great. I mean, people, people are really open to that indie scene and and i'm and i'm very thankful for them because without those readers you know taking a chance on somebody that's unknown i i wouldn't exist and so i'm i'm very grateful very grateful now so that is where viewers readers can find you it's your mm -hmm. website they can subscribe there to to your newsletter you're saying and yes. that's, that's how they can follow you yeah I have, I have yeah if you go to the website at the very bottom there's a place where all you do is put your name and and uh, email and i send out i try to send out a, a monthly newsletter sometimes you know it might not be monthly but it just depends on what's going on so <laughs> usually and it's monthly and it's just kind of updates of what's happening and um yeah it's, it's, it's fun to be in contact and that's how i received actually noticed that you were coming out with your book which okay. is already out now the book coming out in september what yes. is that about the mid-september book is tentatively titled the three graces and it's um, it's very close to my heart only because it takes place in 1830s, what they called Alta, California back then. 
and that was um, California when it was a Mexican territory. And I only say that because I'm a California girl. And so I've always wanted to write about that time period. And the three graces are three sisters. They're the De La Rosa sisters. And um, you've got the one sister who's kind of the main character, um, Natalia, Natalia. And then you have um, Narcissa, who's the middle daughter, um, who's a little flirtatious and fun. <laughs> and then Nerida, Nettie is the baby. And she's kind of um, not as pretty, but she's very sweetly natured. And so it takes place um, in Santa Barbara. Actually, I, I put it in Santa Barbara when the when the state was um, large ranchos. And the father, um, Francisco Don Paco, he um, is charged with breaking up the lands from when they were um, given to the mission. So he has the, I guess you, unsavory or savory, depending on how you look at it from whose point of view, of breaking up the land and, and divvying it out. And so that's why they're there, because they're actually um, originally from Sonora in Mexico. And um, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, the characters were fun. And, you know, like I said, um, being of California, I really, I really enjoyed writing this book. And um, yeah, hopefully once, once it comes back from the editor and the cover is done, I expect it out mid-September. So that will, we'll that look will forward, be number we'll six. Look I'm sorry. Looking forward. Looking to forward. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, I think it'll be. A, I think people will really like it. It's a fun book. And we'll talk we'll more talk about, about it then. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much thank for being here today. Yeah. Is there anything, Is anything else you'd like, like, like to share? Share. No, just just as I mentioned, I do have my my website and my Twitter account and my Facebook. So if you're interested in connecting and seeing what I'm up to. Um, Please join me, follow me, Twitter, <laughs> and uh, and and we'll we'll be in touch. And then, like I said, um, you know, I'm always working on a new novel. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.